matter of fact, leads the league in scoring at 19.2. A good three-point shooter, plus he can go to the rim. And then a guy maybe who's made the biggest drives, the coach's son, Buddy Bayheim, one of the best three-point shooters in the league, also has the ability to put it on the floor. Two very versatile offensive players. For Clemson to right the ship, I know you believe Amir Sims has got to find his game. He blew it out against Duke. Had a marvelous game. He needs to warm up again tonight. No, there's no, there's no question they need his offense, and you'll see in the highlights right here, this is the game-tying three against North Carolina that finally got them their first win ever in Chapel Hill. He can get to the line as well. He's been off the last couple of games. They need him to regain his form. Should be an interesting matchup. Syracuse will look to slow batters down inside, of course, with that patented zone of theirs. Clemson wants to warm it up, make him go up and down the floor. The lineups and tip coming up. is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless. Your local Ford dealer. And LS Tractor. Visit us at lstractorusa.com. It's ACC College Basketball. The Orange and the Tigers from Little John Boy. They've spruced this place up since you and I were here together to land the last time for some ACC Sunday night. Here are the starting lineup brought to you by Ellis Tractor, Gerard Payne, Georgia, Hugh Salida, Crab Scott Newman, Kevin Mack, and Amir Sims for Clemson. Boy, and then Tim, you touched on that at the top with the, uh, with the standings. If Syracuse should win this game, 7-3, 5-0 and on the road at the halfway mark. Uh, it'd be a pretty nice start to the season. Our officials for tonight's game of veteran crew, Jamie Lucky, Roger Ayers, and Paul Sells. And the turnover to open for Clemson. Let's get a look at your keys to this game brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Well, anytime you play against Syracuse, you're going to be playing against that zone. And uh, for the Clemson Tigers, uh, they've got to get some perimeter offense and find ways to get into creases. And uh, for, for Syracuse, they want to keep that zone compact until Clemson starts making shots. There they are. Good look at them. And a uh, reminder after those turnovers for both teams to open this game, what will be necessary for either one of these teams to come away with a W. And this is a very important game going into February. We're at the halfway mark of the conference season. Well, look, look how tight that zone is right now. I mean, uh, you know, and that's... That's a great start by Trapp. Uh, and the more they can do that, the zone extends out farther and it, it, it creates gaps in that zone. That's Bryson Goodine that knocked that one down and he got a wide open look. And he, you mentioned in talking with Brad Brownell this morning at a very early shoot around, he held it at 7.30. He said, we're going to run a number of guys in the middle of that zone right there at the nail at the top of the key. There's Dolajai's runner. It does not go, but he recovers it and walks. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dolajai is, uh, and, it's, and you know what? It's a terrific job in, uh, in getting Sims in there. And then... Uh, Trap of the knocks down that three, but uh, they're going to run as you talked about. They're going to run um, different people into that ACC zone area. Wow! Newman gets in on the act, and it's six to nothing. A pair of triples to open the game for the Tigers. Chris Laval is also in there. Take a look at this Tigers team. Little runner from Bayheim, and he's got it all. It's not just about shooting threes. Against Notre Dame, he went over from downtown but hit five twos. So he can put the ball on the deck and get it done for you. And that was different from last year. I mean, he was known primarily as a, a standstill jump shooter. But uh, adding that little game off the bounce has really helped him out. You know, teams are going to try to drive him off the three-point line, even though he is made 71 on the year. <laughs> Old saying in uh, the coaching profession, if you've got a son out there, if he's not playing much, that's okay. If he's playing a lot, it's okay if he's really good. Well, Buddy Beheim is really, really good. Well, you, you can tell that he's, you know, he's, he's earned the respect of his no teammates. No question. 
Dolezal, who really gets a lot of dirty work done for the flight of size that he has. Not much girth, but an outstanding basketball IQ. Clemson gets it back. Two and a half minutes gone by. There's 51-year-old Brad Brownell. Hard to believe, Mike, it's been 10 years for him here at Clemson and uh, has had a remarkably successful career. There's Sims. That's yeah, Tevin Mack inside. And Mack getting the bucket. And Sims, you know, he's, he's a very good passer. Uh, yep. this, this is not a big Clemson team, but uh, not only can uh, Sims score, but he can deliver the ball as well. Hard drive by Hughes, and he pulls up for the jumper. 8-4 to four, Clemson. It's interesting to see how deep these teams go into their benches and uh, you know and you know playing the zone I mean Bayheim has played 40 plus minutes in games six or seven times already this year tough pass it was kicked by Girard and he's a guy who emerged early in the year right? they were a little unsettled with the point guard position but Major Girard question mark yeah, coming in really yeah and he, he he really has calmed things down and directed this team beautifully we talked to Jim Bayheim and You'll say, well, we feel really good about the fact that we've got two guys that can really score from deep, and you add Gerard, who's shown the ability to score himself. That's really a good thing. And another answer coming from Tevin Mack, and that's exactly what you felt they needed. The Mack attack is underway. He's got five of Clemson's 11. Yeah, he was the one. Uh, he was one of the guys struggling in his uh, last three. He was one of 16 from, six from the three-point line. Uh, you know, how many times have we talked about it and I told you that all it takes is that one shot to open the basket up. Let's see if that gets him off and running. Right to the middle. Sims can't get it to go. Great defense that time by Syracuse on the interior. Nice transition defense by Clemson on that live ball turnover. Hughes with a good find out front to Gerard. And a follow on the offensive, rebounding at Sidibe, getting the job done on the glass, picking up a little loose change. And that's, he's shooting 67%. They're getting a little bit more offense out of him inside, and that's where he's going to score. Offensive rebounding and off the drive. Mack, too strong off the heel. Good tap out by Sims for the recycle for the Tigers. Mack giving it up. Good ball movement here. Dump down low, he gets it again. He's very active. A little quick to that spot. And Tevin Mack out of Greer High School in Columbia, South Carolina. Getting it done. Tigers out of the gates with a royal flush and lead by five. Down a couple of threes, have a five-point edge. Not quite five minutes gone by here in the opening half and time for tonight's Toyota Let's Go Places and Buddy Beheim has certainly done that. 18 straight points and a win over Virginia Tech. Scored 18 first half in that win against Pitt back on January 25th. 71 three-point field goals made that seventh of the nation and atop the ACC. Well, I, I remember doing some of his games early last year when he was a freshman in Tim and you could you could see the pressure that he felt being, you know, Jim's son. And yeah. but as this, once he got into ACC last year, his confidence grew, and it's just carried over to this year. Got a little perspiration. This is uh, paying. They're paying respects uh, tonight to the military, pride in the military prior to the game, and this wonderful celebration and uh, some uh, acrobatics of the air to go along with it. Wonder if maybe they got a little perspiration on the floor as a result. Yes. Just finding out about it. They asked you and me if they wanted us to repel out of the rafters. <laughs> we politely refused. We told them no. <laughs> We're the senior crew on the ACC. There we go. There you go. Yes. A number of uh, young people that have uh, been educated here at, at Clemson on their way to serving our country, and we thank them for their service. Amazing to think uh, the kind of dedication that we're discussing for these young men and women. See, the three-point shooting story really what's uh, noteworthy, plus the turnovers committed, very early turnovers by Syracuse. Good start for Mack all the way around, only a 59% free throw shooter coming in, but uh, seven points for him so far.
Here's Gerard working on trap, has to give it up deep to Hughes from way downtown. It goes crying off the front iron. Pulled down by Trap. Looking for that pass to the middle, unable to make it. Now they do to Sims. And the turnaround won't go. And it's pulled down by Dolezal. That time they had, they had two people. They had both sides of the lane covered in the middle of the zone. Mayheim with a little dribble handoff to Gerard. He's 34% from three. He's blocked. That was a beautiful block by Trapp. Using his length as a difference maker. And yet another turnover committed by the Cues. You see Sims try to get that pick against Beheim. Now he gets it right in the middle. A ball fake by Newman. And the soft, crafty lefty drops it through. Nothing but nylon. Yeah, nice little bump take that time. And you talked about that pick at the uh, top of the key. Yeah. You can use man-to-man -man principles against the zone. And a lot of times you'll see that screening action to get guys open. Syracuse 0 for 4 from downtown. 3 out of 9 from within the arc. Trailing by 9 now. Shot clock. Under 10. Dolezal. Looking to beat Mack and does so off the bounce. He's got a lot of game and I think is an understated complimentary player for Syracuse. Yeah, and he's, he's another one who's, you know, added the dribble to it. Uh, things kind of cleared out. Not a real, we talk about not a real huge team for Clemson. Not a real big win protector out there. Look out, Mack. Wave it off. Foul was prior to the putback. Well, they have gotten physical under there. Matt, along with Sims. Garrier coming into the game for the first time. Quincy Garrier, number one. That's where the foul occurred prior to the shot. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the things you can do against the zone is get underneath it and uh, good work that time on the offensive glass. And to be honest, this is from the last few games that I've done in the league. Referees have let the interior guys play. Mm -hmm. There's just been some physical play. It's been a little more tighter call out on the perimeter. One of the reasons for that, a letter was sent out, Mike, uh, about a month ago after the NCAA caught wind of scoring being down and largely because of the three-point line being moved back. And they have really put an emphasis now on hand-checking out along the perimeter as a result, thinking that they need to get the scores up and by allowing more free throws, they can do that. We can debate whether that's a good thing or not, but that's what happened. How about guys getting in the gym and taking more shots? Yep. You know, that yep. might help the percentage go up a little bit. Too. I'm with you. <laughs> Hunter Tyson claims that rebound. Into the game for Clemson number five and white. The iron unkind to Alamir Dawes. See, the one thing, is, and so far, Clemson's done a nice job. You can't, the ball can't stick in any one player's hands. And the more you move it, you, the more you make that zone move, and the better shot you'll get. Well, Sadibe checked out. He's got two fouls. Gary came in for him. Washington's also on the floor for the first time in the backcourt number 10 for Syracuse, the junior from Buffalo. And that foul goes against Dawes. His first, 15 to 8, Tigers by 7. TC College Hoops is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. Husqvarna, all-star lawns start with Automower. And CPI Security. We welcome you back to Clemson, South Carolina. We mentioned Brown Brownell a moment ago. He's um, had great success here. And just passed Cliff Ellis for the all-time wins mark at 178. Now he's at 179. And he got the North Carolina monkey or orangutan, if you want to call it. Or what's bigger than that? Uh, <laughs> 59 straight. King Kong. And when I came in today, and I didn't realize this, it's been a while since I've been at Clemson, 
I noticed Antonio Reynolds Dean. There he is on his staff. Mike, Al McGuire and I in 98, before you and I became partners, did the NCAAs. He got all the way to the Elite Eight. And if you remember, Arthur Lee had that steal to Mark Madsen. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated when Mark Mad Dog Madsen got the dunk and the and one to help propel a six-point comeback uh, to beat Jim Herrick's Rhode Island team. They were just an eyelash away from going to the Final Four. Uh, yeah, Lamar Odom could not get a waiver to get eligible, or he would have been on that team along with Tyson Wheeler and Coutinho Mobley. That was a heck of a basketball team that he was part of. Any way you can get on the cover of Sports Illustrated is a good thing. <laughs> well, you were once at the top of this building because Tree Rollins posterized you. <laughs> Got a triple-double that game. Yeah, right. He did. Yeah. <laughs> One of them was 10 blocks. Seven of them were mine. I believe that was 1980, was it not? No, that was my freshman year. Was that that 70? That was myself, 76 76? 76-77, yeah. Tree's senior year. Yeah, and he went on, of course, to play for years with the Atlanta Hawks. But just uh, enormous memories to see Antonio Reynolds Dean. He had been at Charleston. As you see, a big answer from downtown from Elijah Hughes. If he gets rolling, the transfer from East Carolina can scorch the Nets. Wow, that's the first three of the game for Syracuse. They average a little, a little over eight, eight and a half a game when the tops in the league. Nice move inside. And the foul committed by Garrier. As the move was made there by inside and the foul committed. So, so you, know, you, you talked about, you know, the, the percentage going down and it's actually been pretty small, but these guys aren't even getting close to the line. That was a good three feet behind the, the new line. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think it's an overreaction. Yeah. But the letter did take place. A lot yeah. of times, I think, in college basketball, we tinker too much with the rules while we're in season. Let them get accustomed to what's going on and, and keep the the free well, forum play at uh, the, the we have in mind at work. For the most part, most of the rules that have been implemented have been to the benefit of the offense. Yes. Just try to yes. increase scoring and... You know, try to increase uh, you know shooting percentages. Behind, not there, just off the front rim, pulled down by Trapp. Got that huge brace on from his past ACL injury, but he moves pretty freely on it, and he's back at 100 percent, regardless of that brace. Hemingway is into the game. Talk about a tough injury. He was out for like nine games with a high ankle sprain. Played some against Louisville. They're maybe going to need that three to fall for him tonight against this zone. Well, he was perfect. He had 12 points against the Cardinals. Up against the clock. Sims in desperation. That'll be a shot clock violation. So the patented zone worked to perfection there. And that was that's that's another a rule that I'd like to see changed. Now, there was, there was no Tiger around. Clearly, Syracuse is going to get the ball, and potentially you take a break away from a team like that, and you know, even though I, by rule, they have to make that call. So a lot of times you may see a live ball situation with numbers, and it's taken away because the buzzer sounded. Tyson picks up that foul. Talked about the good start that Clemson's gotten off to offensively. Defensively, they've done a nice job as well down at the other end. Syracuse 38% from the floor, only one made three. Washington trying to find Bayheim, but can't. Now he finds Hughes. Shot clock down to five again. A step back trick. Hello. How do you do, Mr. Hughes? Well, two threes for him to go along with another bucket, and it's 17 to 14. That's if the, uh, the leading scorer in the league can bail you out. I mean, that's what he did with the shot clock running down on that play. Well, that pass was not corralled by wow. near Sims. Way too strong that time for Hughes, and a little quick. 20, 23 seconds on the shot clock still, and uh, maybe a little heat check on, yeah, that, on yeah. that one, but I don't know that Coach Beheim was too happy with that. Tyson will load up for three. Sims an offensive rebound. He's trapped. And it's out of bounds. Leads to a turnover as he was trapped by the Orange. And, you know, great hustle play by Amir Sims. Four Orange jerseys in there. He comes up with it. And nobody helped him. The lane was wide open. And if he had gotten a cutter, he could have gotten a layup. 
There's a huge the ball. ball. Yeah. It's... He has been the offense. Ahan trying to help him out. Can't get it to go. Dolajai runs it down and saves it to Buddy Bayham. He's been the quiet since uh, that first basket. Now one of five at this point. Puts it on the deck. Why not? If you're struggling from yep. the perimeter, put it on the deck and get you a layup is exactly what he did. That's, uh, again, a, a play that he probably couldn't have made early last year, but now the confidence to be able to score at three different levels. Newman passing up. Nice and a three point. ball, beautifully done by Trapp. Live Trapp with an answer. And the Tigers again lead by four. This, uh, talked about the ball not sticking in one place. It changes sides, and uh, you get a good look. Garrier puts it on the floor. And a good matchup. He likes that matchup. And really took advantage of Hunter Tyson there, his first bucket. Only, only four free throws shot in this game so far. Good, good pace to the game. Yeah. Two turnovers here and there for both. Tyson in traffic. And Jamie Lucky spots a foul inside. Foul goes against Dolajai, his first. Newman in the scoring column. Clemson with a two-point lead in this game, and uh, 12 of those points have come behind the arc, and uh, nice ball movement, what we see right there. That time, Newman stepping up into a wide-open shot. And then Kevin Mack with that corner look. And this is a beautiful drive and kick out right here. You see the defender falling down, and Trap gets the open look. And so far, 10 of 14 field goal attempts for Clemson have been behind the arc. So clearly, they're trying to loosen some things up. Well, that they shoot over 50% from the floor. Their shots are going to be from downtown. As you talked to me, you've had them several times this year. They really lack a low post presence. And what they decided to do is extend the floor, get Syracuse's bigs away from the basket as best they can as you look at the quick numbers. Points in the paint being right now the factor. Well, that's been that's been Syracuse, and we're, we're not surprised at all by that. And, and I, you know, we talked about the zone of Syracuse, and I think it's a team feels much more comfortable shooting the ball at home than they would say up at the Carrier Dome, which is an intimidating and rather large <laughs> building inside. Even Syracuse would tell you it's a struggle yeah. to score sometimes yep. in there. Yep. And only 34 points in an earlier game this year against Virginia. Virginia, they have really, though, Mike, improved mightily, this Syracuse team, since the first month of the basketball season. Here's Hemingway. He's a three-point specialist, doesn't get that one to go. And again, work on the offensive glass, but unfortunately for Clemson, Tevin Mack could not hold on. Here's Hughes the other way. Yeah, the Tigers have had some second-point chance opportunities that they haven't taken advantage of. Washington way too strong. And the ball out of bounds, last touched by Clemson's Kayvon Moore. And four offensive rebounds for the Tigers, only one basket. Kayvon just into the game, along with him and Wade. Washington remains at the point now with Gerard sitting after a sluggish start. Beheim beautifully run by the young son of the coach, but he putting it down. He's used the finger roll now to go along with uh, the rest of his weaponry. Well, you, you talked about it, that, uh, that them struggling, and, and Beheim has used the dribble drive the last couple times that he scored a basket to get to the rim. So 6.39 remaining, and Clemson gets a timeout with the score tied at 20. Scott and Sims will come in after the next dead ball. How about this? 20 points for Syracuse. They do not have an assist yet in this game. Uh, and it's just been a lot of one-on-one -on -one yep. basketball and drives and uh, dribble drives and shots. Well, when you've got as many guys that can put it on the deck as Syracuse does, I think Jim's fine with this. Yeah, see, I mean, the thing's just, things just parted inside. Trap, once he got his shoulders by him, 
There was nobody in the line behind that to even take a charge. And the last game, Syracuse jumped out to a 20-point first half lead and held off a second-half rally from Pitt to win at the Carrier Dome. And this is a this is a depth from an offensive standpoint a Syracuse team in terms of being able to create your own shot as we've seen in some time. Especially when Gerard gets it going. He's back in the lineup now. Number 11 coming in for Washington who spelled him for about five minutes. Up against the clock. Sims knows it. Fade away. I think he walked as he was trying to create his fadeaway jump shot. So the seventh turnover committed by Brownells Club. Yeah, he just got swarmed a little bit in the middle because it looked like uh, Tevin Mack was open on the wing, but he just couldn't see him. Let me see the turnover story. So right now, it's nine field goals for Syracuse without an assist. Bayheim with a pop-up. Working on Curran Scott. Well defended, too. Here comes Good Eye the other way. Wide trap, I beg your pardon. Newman with a ball fake. Trap. Finally hauled down by Hughes. Both of these teams have pulled off offensively since that first five minutes, and then right there, the last thing, and that's going to be three shots. Yeah, and Sims gives himself up. With a foul that uh, maybe later in the game he'll wish that he had uh, kept in his hip pocket. <laughs> There's a look, and uh, you know you just gotta get your hand. You gotta have your hands high in that situation instead of having the ball down low. And that's really where Sims got into trouble, and you put a 78% free throw shooter on the line. Already nine points and a couple of rebounds. Elijah Hughes. And now a word from Works Switch Driver. The Works Switch Driver. With two rotating chucks, you can switch between bits in a second and get projects done twice as fast. He's a mismatch for just about anyone that tries to come out and check him. He's really... Just one of the better scorers in this league, but one of the best offensive players in the country. Here's his defense. Right on cue. I like it. The C -T -A, those are the ones. One, you can't put them on the line and give them three easy free throws. And then two, you can't be lazy with that cross-court pass. Those pick sixes are what the you know, Syracuse really, they rely on that. It's a 9-0 Syracuse run. Newman. See, when you're on a when you're on the opposite end of that run, you can't take that early jump shot. You've got to work, try to work offense and get a little better shot than that. And as you know, the Orange, when they get a lead, particularly with that zone, it gets more and more oh, compact. No question. Bayheim, unable to get that one to go, and it's out of bounds. You can be trailing by nine or ten minutes because there are fewer possessions. You feel like you're down 20 against these guys. Yeah, but uh, great anticipation that time by Hughes, and there's just no way for the, the defense to get back and uh, even you know, try to get a block or a charge. And things, and, you know, if you're Clemson, you can't panic. You know they're on a run, but you're only down five, and there's still plenty of time left in this quarter. Tigers were up by nine at one point during the opening half. Nice work on the offensive glass by Newman. And he navigates his way through, using the window. He's got nine, and the Tigers trail by three. Bullseye, nice look. That's that IQ we were talking about. They're thinking he's going to shoot, but Gary A knows differently, and he just waited, snuck in behind, and that's your first Syracuse assist of the night. Well, there was a miscommunication by Clemson defensively between the two guys. Uh, they got caught. They both went at the goal eye. There's Mack. Got the ball right in the middle of the zone at what they call the nail. Took it inside to get the bucket. Gerard just grazed the front rim. And the big youngster in out there. Very raw, but a very good talent for the future. Trey Jamison 
Seven footer from Hoover High from Birmingham out on the deck for the first time for the Tigers. We thought we might see him in this game and the loose ball foul spotted by Jamie Lucky. And it's a second foul on Dolajai. Garrier working a little magic off of the pass from Dolajai. Syracuse up by three, and a lot of it has been fueled by Elijah Hughes. He kind of let other people work into the game early, but uh, he has been looking for his offense and scoring in a variety of ways. And uh, see right here the great anticipation on that steal and dunk. He's been knocking down threes, getting to the baskets, and uh, he has 13 of the 27 points, Tim, for, for uh, Syracuse. A native of Beacon, New York, a young man that's been in double-digit points every game, 18 points or more. 14 times his career high 33 against Georgia Tech a year ago. This is a really solid player in every sense of the word. And he and Dolajai and uh, Beheim have played virtually every second of this first half. Yeah. And you'll probably see them play most of the second half. Another well. reason another reason to play zone, right? Yeah, I mean, let's you, you know, you have to be active and you, it's not like you don't expect them to spend energy, but it, it does, you can conserve it a little bit more than running around after a guy playing man-to-man. Curran -man. Scott with his first free ball. He had six the other night. One of five from downtown at Louisville. Youngster from Edmond, Oklahoma. And there's the in traffic Hughes. And that's the second time and he, he hit the deck pretty hard. But that's the second time and he's gotten bailed out with a foul. I don't think he makes that shot if you just go up vertically and uh, make him make a tough shot, especially especially going to his left. He splits the, the double team right there and you know I think I think he can just let that one go. Newman did get the foul, his first. was teetering a moment ago and then they got a big three ball to cut it back to three. Amir Dawes gets it inside to Jemison and again just unable to finish for the size it's all right there. Once he just gets uh, some playing time and gets lathered up look out he's he's a future Big man to keep an eye on inside the ACC. Got a, got a great seal inside. One of those ones you have to finish. Caught the ball deep. This is still pretty raw offensively. Tyson gets the foul. His second. Tell you, look, through the years, and I think you would agree, Mike, Red Brownell is an outstanding defensive coach. He, he generally gets really good athletes, but guys that sometimes struggle to score, the prospects that begin as projects, Jemison is going to be one of those that falls into that category. But he's in, but in recent, when he's had success, you know, 221 seasons the last couple of years, he's, he's gotten more guys who can score the basketball. Absolutely. Yep. He's last year a veteran group that could score points and had go-to guys. They're still trying to develop that with this group. And there's a three ball. Alan Air Dawes from Newark, New Jersey. The Patrick scored. You talk about projects. This kid, a four-star prospect coming out of school. Everybody wanted him. Providence, Seton Hall, St. John's, UConn. And he managed to make his way down here to Clemson. Tigers lead it now, 30 to 29 with 90 seconds left in the opening half. Got the crowd going, and here's Beheim with an answer from downtown. And arguably could have gotten a foul, and that could have been a four-point play. Yeah. That was a that, that was a tough shot to knock down. I think Dad is going to yeah. let Paul Sells know about it right now on the baseline. He is. Right. And a quick answer from Alamir Dawes. Two three balls in a row. Six three-pointers. And up. how often we talk about, Tim, the, the last four minutes of the first half, closing it out. Hughes running the curl, could not get that one to go. Bodies on the deck, and Beheim loads up again. Uh, bodies on the deck gave him a great look at the shot. Those long threes, you come up with the offensive rebound, and you get all, you invariably get a great look. Yeah, after a scramble, a step in three, right? Yep. Newman Trek. Good ball movement here. To a wide open Tyson. Now he drives. 
And Roger Ear spots the foul. Well, that foul picked up late by Elijah Hughes. And he's been, uh, he's grabbing his hand. Well, Sidibe got the foul, his third. There's Sidibe. There's the look, There's the look and uh, that's the one where he tries to sell it. But there you see the, the bodies on the floor, and there's nobody around him on that side. Yeah, they're playing a little buddy ball there. <laughs> what I love about Buddy is that he struggled from downtown early. What did he do? Put the ball on the deck, uh, drove in, got a couple of layups, and then get the cylinder rhythm. widened just yeah. a little bit. Get some, uh, get some rhythm back in your game. I know back uh, home in Syracuse, there's a smiling Julie Beheim watching her son, Buddy, light it up on the road for the orange yet again. Two and a half seconds between shot and game clock. Garrier, the rebound, still plenty of time here, and Hughes launches from midcourt. Off of the front iron. It was online, too. It was. It was, it was just a, a hair short. So in a back-and-forth game, Clemson led early by nine. A five-point lead at one point for Syracuse. And they're up by a deuce at the break. At time at Jones on many of these RSM stations. When we come back, you're watching ACC Basketball. at the numbers from the first half. Does anything jump out at you, G-Man, that uh, either team could do to help themselves? Yeah, Jimmy, I, I think the uh, the Tigers have to clean up their on-ball defense. You see the points in the paint, 18-6, to six, and a lot of those have been off the dribble drive. So they've got to find a way to cut out Syracuse from getting into the lane. And these two have really not gotten as much help as they're accustomed to getting from Joe Girard. Uh, the Glen Falls, New York point guard who has, uh, you know, coming into this game averaging just under 12 per, taken out of the game early with a couple of fouls and a turnover to open for Syracuse right away. And let's see if they try to get Sims some touches early to get him going 0 for 2 in that first half. Didn't score. Now you notice they put into the middle Tevin Mack. Where Sims had been. Now Sims moves in there and passes it over to Newman. And the rebound cleared to Arama Sedive. Can't really complain about the quality of that shot against the zone. It's one of those ones you have to knock down. Oh, what a pass. In traffic, Dolajai to Hughes. He threaded the needle through about three defenders to get that one home. And the foul goes against Sims, his second. Look at this pass by Dolajai. Just a good back cut that time. And uh, Sims just a little late to react to it on the back line. Hughes 78% at the stripe. This is the first. Up to 16 points now. Six out of seven at the free throw line. There's a steal by Hughes. His second of the night. Out to Bayham running the wing. Fourth turnover of the game so far for Sims. And you can see they're really attacking him with a double team. Hughes did not get the shoulders quite square that time. Live trap comes out of there with it for Clemson. If they're going to try to find a way is Mack in traffic unable to get it or corral it fans thought there might have been a foul but no whistle there again there's that physical play inside and a beautiful little floater 38 to 33 Brownells team trailing by five we're in the opening moments of the second half Stock trying to find it inside the Sims. That's another reach in foul. That will go against Dolajai, and that's number three on him. 
a look, and uh, you know, it's, I, I love that shot. Even though they talked about, you know, it's a one you usually would use against a shot blocker inside, but it also takes away any kind of charge opportunity. Sims trying to set that pick against the zone to allow Scott an opportunity. Shot clock again down to five. And that runner won't go. Sims on the offensive glass and pulled down by Girard, and he motors up the floor. His zone has been pretty stingy in the first two and a half minutes of the second half. Aheim lost his dribble, regathered, and will get the money. Well, he hung in there. Winner Brad Barnell is going to... He's going to let this go one possession, but this game is teetering, as you had said in the first half. <laughs> yeah. You know, they get a miss here, and Syracuse makes a shot. Trying to get that pass to the middle is becoming increasingly more difficult to Sims or to Mac, whoever is in the middle. There it is. And almost rushed that shot as a result. There's the follow by Mac. So Tevin Mac here to clean it up. That they needed that bucket. That offensive rebound has been there, Tim, but I just don't think up to this point and up until that basket that Clemson has taken advantage of those opportunities inside. 40 to 35. Another three ball. That's that now that's a green light right there. <laughs> <laughs> 17 now. For Buddy Behan. A steal by Gerard. Count the basket. Pinned against the backboard. Ball and hit the backboard. So count the hoop. And just some live ball, live ball turnovers. And my, that one was close. It was. That one was awfully close. By the way, that was the first bucket for Girard. But 11 turnovers right now for Clemson is killing them. Syracuse playing very well with only four. 10-2 run to open. And the Hall of Fame coach, Jim Beheim, knows a thing or two about coming out of the gates in the second half quickly. How you end a half and how you begin a half. I think it's so vital. Brad Brownell may be trying to get to that media timeout under 16 minutes. Three big for shot. Trapp. That was big. And we've seen it in this game. Every time it looks like there's going to be some separation, the other team is answered. The dribble handoff to Hughes. He's stripped. Out of bounds. It belongs to the Orange. 17 on the shot clock. And we've got a timeout. When in doubt, go to Buddy. Who knows what to do with it? Said he wouldn't get a haircut until the current winning streak ends. Well, it may not end tonight. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by the Works Switch Driver, 2-in-1 Drill and Driver. Myrtle Beach Golf Trail and Bojangles Sausage Biscuits. It's bow time. Quick start for Syracuse. At one point up 10 on a 10-2 run. It's now a seven-point game. Mike, I cannot look at Buddy Beheim and not think of another sharpshooter now on Jim Beheim's staff, Jerry McNamara, who was an outstanding shooter as a freshman on that team that went on to win a national championship. He's a little further down the line there. Not particularly in that shot, but Jerry's a magnificent member of that staff. Knows a thing or two about putting the ball in the hole. A pretty good teammate to yes, play he with. Did. Anthony, yes, he sure did. <laughs> he sure did. And some shot blockers to go with it. Another loose ball on that pass to the center for Clyde Trapp, and he turns it over. They're just having all kinds of trouble handling the ball, trying to get the ball into the lane. I mean, they're fine when they're out on the perimeter, but anything inside is getting picked off. Payheim in traffic. That one comes off the heel. Mack retrieves it, and with the outlet, the Clyde Trapp. Alamir Dawes had a couple of threes when he came in in the opening half. See if he stays warm here in the second. There's Trapp. 
He's up to 12 on the night, and just like that, it's 45 to 41. And they're, they were basically daring him to take that shot, too. The defense was a good four feet off of him. Mayhem was trying to find Dolajai, but could not. Gerard gets it back to Buddy. That's his spot. I mean, that is automatic. And a foul off the ball to go along with the bucket as Dolajai got tied up with Trap. So a double whammy here for Clemson. You got the three, and then off the ball simultaneously, right there, the bump against Dolajai. Yeah, that was clear by Clyde Trap. So this could be a five-point trip coming up for the Orange. And they're going to they're take a look at that. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, an elbow thrown to the shoulder. Yeah, I just wonder yeah, if they're going to look and see if it was a flagrant or not. Yep. Right there. Yeah, and, you know, if, if it was... It was. It looked like a. It looked like more of a shoulder than anything. Yeah. It didn't look like he got his arm extended. No, no and, and not to the uh, the head or neck area. So maybe just a common foul. Yeah, a hard foul. Yeah. But oh, by the way, whenever you see the officials begin to discuss this, and it happens very often, whenever the discussion takes place, I'm always thinking, okay, this is going to be an F1. Now one official is going to let. One coach, no. And he's yeah. going to get one, uh, Dolezal yeah. get one shot, so it looks like right. it's just going to be a common foul. Paul Sells will tell us. Yeah, it is a flagrant one. I thought it would be. The moment you see that. Okay. Okay. So they, 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 they did, they, and they had the ability to upgrade. And they think at first it was a common foul, but they went over and took a look at it, upgraded it to a flagrant one. Yeah. So he's going to get two free throws, and they're going to get possession. Yeah. So this could be a big turnaround. Absolutely. And by the way, a little tip for those of you that watch a lot of basketball, in college at least, right? Whenever the official looks at the screen, comes back, has a consultation, and you see one of the coaches go to both, the, one of the referees go to both sidelines, it's going to be upgraded to a flagrant one. Well, and also when you see that third, two officials originally go over, when that third official gets called to come over, they, you know, they try to come to some consensus. Yes. Right, what did you see? What did you see? What did you see? And I think the note, it, making absolutely certain, a little woofing going on between Trap and Dolajai in the aftermath of it. So, there was clear intent, according to the officials, and that's why it was upgraded to a flagrant one. Beheim is rejected by Sims, and a quick foul given up by Buddy in the aftermath of it. A little frustration there. Uh, Jim Beheim talking to him on the way down. He said, use a pump stake in that situation. He went right up, and uh, he timed it well. Look, you get the dribble, catch, pump fake right there, and you get the shot. All things considered, it's now a nine-point game. Could have been worse there for Clemson. It could have been 12 or 13 yeah, easily. Absolutely. And uh, and maybe they can recharge their batteries a little bit. Get physical and score. Just like that. Beautiful work inside the Tevin Mack. And an and one opportunity coming for Clemson. Well, here's a look. It's one of the few interior passes where they were late getting over and he finished and Again, talk about ways about getting into the game. Get to the free throw line. You know, score the three point to play the old fashioned way, stop the clock, and just kind of claw your way back in. And Dolajai, who's a really vital, intelligent basketball player, is now saddled with four fouls with a lot of time remaining. Mack now with 13 points and the lead down to six for the Orange. Trying to post up, but this is a mismatch against him. Gets it out to Beheim. Trying to negotiate past trap. Shot clock at five. He stepped out of the He did. Stepped on the inline. Yeah. And it belongs to the Tigers. Fifth turnover.
Sims not really looking for his shot at all. This is a young man that they were hoping to get back into double figures. But How about that work? Well, he's Kevin been, Mack has been outstanding. He's been getting great position inside and uh, not afraid to go up with either hand. All of a sudden, a four-point game. 16 for Kevin Mack. Hughes off the bounce. A solo. Not there. The rebound cleared to Clyde Trapp. Length of the floor. On the wing. Trapp runs it down. There's the pass inside the Sims. Wave it off. It's going the other way. No, Do no, we no. have an overrule? Yeah, we may have an overrule between Lucky and Roger Ayers. Let's see. Sims is going to get the foul, his third. Yeah. It is a player control foul. And there was Roger some Ayers called it. He, Roger Ayers called it a good bet. They had one. Yep. And Jamie Lucky came in. Hold him off. He sure did. Ayers had one call. Lucky had another. And he deferred. And it's 50 to 46. Hey, I like it when it's decisive, though, Mike. An overrule of that situation. Officials get together as long as they're consistent in terms of, okay, you had a better look, we'll go that way. And we got another loose ball foul. Uh, Jamie Lucky if, is something if decisive, and he's been in this yep. league a long time. Sadiba gets that foul. And that is his third. And Arama Sidibe will be forced to sit as well. Jesse Edwards will check in. This is the freshman from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, coming in by way of IMG Academy. 6'11", but only 215 pounds. They got a lot of big guys with a lot of... <laughs> that are pretty lean at Syracuse inside. Dolajai is another example. But uh, but that length really comes in handy with the 2-3. Mack, look at that inside. It rolls around the iron. He stays with it. The Mack attack is underway. He's got 18. The Tigers down two. Well, Moore was the one who kept that one alive. He keeps the tap alive and it allows his teammate to score. Payhan, this time off the heel. A steal in traffic and a foul. Quincy Garrier came away with that steal and then the foul on the loose ball situation by Kevin Mack. This young man is really picking up the loose change. 50 to 48, our score. We'd be remiss, Mike, if we didn't talk about these players paying homage to the unspeakable loss of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gigi, and six others in Calabasas, California over the weekend. And it affected everyone and will continue to affect many globally around the world and I know for you you played against uh, Kobe's dad Joe yep. in the NBA early on and uh, when I was up in Philly playing lived about a mile or two away from him so um, you know and then I got to know him through interviewing him when I was broadcasting with the Hornets and yeah. um, originally drafted by the Hornets and traded for Vlade Divac in that deal I remember that I wanted sure to go out to LA and play out there and uh you know, just such a, a tragic 41 years old. Yeah. You know, his daughter was going to be a heck of a, a basketball basketball player, player yeah. much like him. And, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, just... Well, in every respect, the aftermath of this, and we've seen many, many great young athletes taken far too soon, going back to Clemente. You mentioned Pat Tillman, perhaps, a former Arizona Cardinal who's died trying to preserve our, our country's freedom. This resonates with every generation and and will will resonate for quite some time to come. Well, and, and you think, too, this was the first... I mean, Muhammad Ali was probably the most iconic global athlete ever, but his, you know, his death to Parkinson's lasted a long time and people saw it coming, but there's... So this was so shocking in its finality and especially in this era of social media. Yep. 
word got around really quickly. Uh, Jim Beheim was uh, yeah. one of the coaches on the United States team, and as, as Kobe liked to call it, the Redeem team. It mattered so much to him as an assistant with uh, Coach Krzyzewski after in Coach K came in and took over. 08 and, and, and 12 in both of those teams. And, you know, Jim was with him the whole way with those really two teams and a lot of, Kobe and a, played on. Yeah, in a lot of ways, Kobe's makeover, both professionally and personally, started there. And look, he, he aged gracefully. He was a wonderful father, and he'll be missed by many. All right, nine minutes gone in the second half here. Gerard dribbles into a double team. Dolezal on the floor, playing with four, and gets the leaping leaner to go. 52-49, six in the game for Dolezal. Made a nice, a little bit of a risky shot, too. You, re you bring in the charge in, on, in that type of play, but a solid finish. Ball was kicked by Gerard. Tell you, he dribbled into this double team, but he remained patient, didn't he? A little bit like Steve Nash right there. Yeah, it was. Good, in, Good call. You know, keeping, uh, keeping himself under control, not panicking, talking to the coaches, uh, how steady he has been for this group and the boys he plays with. The Orange lead by three. Ten and a half remaining. Nice pass again to Matt. Beautifully done by Garrier. That defense was outstanding there. Tremendous recovery in anticipation by Garrier. Good look inside, and uh, yeah, just just going straight up like that forced him to miss the shot. It wasn't a block, but might as well have been. Garrier wills his way to the 10, stays with it. Ball is loose on the deck, and we've got, got a tie-up. And I believe the arrow takes us the other way. Clemson will have the basketball. Well, it's been uh, it's been equitable, but it's been very physical in the paint area. It has been. Brad Brownell's team scratching and clawing from behind most of the way. They had an early nine-point lead. Syracuse got control, and since that time had led most of the way. There's a answer from Kayvon Moore, the sophomore from Macon, Georgia, West Side High. His first bucket, 52-51. Bayheim, oh, the iron unkind, pulled down by Kraft. That one was halfway down the cylinder and out. There's Mack right where he wants it. And again, the, the, the play on right there allows him. Gary just tried to buy the foul. Fifty-three, fifty-two. Clemson regathers the lead. How about that play by Gary? A? Gets it done. Just wrestled it away from Clyde Trap. And another foul inside. That's two on Trap. Yeah, was a, we couldn't hear the whistle right there, but uh, there's the look. And, you know, most times they, you, you lower the shoulder like that and you get the call. But uh, well, Jim is lobbying finish. with Paul Sells as we speak right in front of us. It's a soft lobby, but a lobby. <laughs> Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, a new way to experience golf in Myrtle Beach. Visit MyrtleBeachGolfTrail.com. Even after the free throws, it's still a Tiger 12-4 run over the last five minutes. It's been working inside in the offensive glass. Seems like they found that little crease. It's been Mack and Trap that yep. have done a lot of the work. Yep. And a foul inside. Offensive foul. Yep. They got Mack. Brown Brownell shaking his head over that one. That's number two on Tevin Mack. Brad is really hot now. 
And he's letting Paul Sells know, and well, they were, be lucky, too. They, they were all... Got a bench warning yeah, against they, Clemson. And, and what happened is, that's, well, they, you, you can only replay a play once in-house. And that's what the crowd is reacting to, and that's what Brad Brownell was pointing at. Yeah. Now, the referees are not going to look up at the, no. you know, at, at the replay up top. And the reach-in foul against Kayvon Moore. And that puts uh, Clemson into the, over the bonus. So for the last eight and a half minutes, Syracuse is going to be shooting free throws. By the way, Mike, do you get the feeling that while they were allowing the physicality for a good bit of the time, for the next oh, eight or so minutes, it's going to be a quicker whistle? Yeah, I think Because it's getting physical. You can feel it at, at times chippy between the two teams. Well, and the one, the one who can't afford... Or it's not the beneficiary of that is Dolezal with the four four fouls. Yep, we got both of those free throws. And I think his presence on the floor for Bayheim is crucial. He does the little things that don't necessarily show up on the stat sheet. Or the orange. Uh, look, at, look at Sims is trying to just ride him up and get inside position, try to draw that foul. Now Mack moves in there. He's doing the same thing. Well, then, see, Dole, he's, he's really got to be careful for about another four minutes. And then, you know, then you, you, you have to start going after things. 23 for Tevin Mack. He averages 11 and a half per game. A career high for him is 22 against Duke. Beheim short armed that runner. And another foul. Hey, I'm not at all pleased. If they whistle Dolezal, that's fine. We'll find out. I think he may have fouled out. Just as we mentioned it, you see here the foul against Dolezal, Mike, and it was not much, but enough. Well, well it's, it's less than what they've been letting go, right. you know, up to that point. And, uh... But as we suggested prior to it, the game had become more physical. It got a little chippy. And you could just sense that the whistles were going to be tighter. Well, and, and the, the guys, the, the guys that um, the Syracuse, well, one guy out there going is Elijah Hughes. He's the only guy who's three points in this half. Without Dolajai, Syracuse comes with uh, Sidibe, and he's playing with three. He's in the middle now, number 34. And we'll be interested to see how long he stays in the game trying to hide Dolajai and his four fouls. Well, Tevin Mack now has got his career high at Clemson. He had 27 at Texas. He began his career there before going through the transfer portal. He may have his all-time career high before the night is done. Gerard not there. And the rebound cleared to Clyde Trapp. Tigers by one with 7.15 remaining. Syracuse only 33% shooting second half. Matt uh, continues the attack. And a timeout. And he is just irate at Sidibe. Jim Bayham giving him an air fall. Now you got to get in front of this guy. He has been burying you in the second half. Well, he's certainly found the seam. And uh, nine points for him in the first half. Tim, 18 here in the second. 27, a new career high. 11 of 15 field goals, eight rebounds. And he is just... Anybody they throw at him in the pain area, he's just scoring right over. I'm talking with Brad Brownell, and I asked him at your request this morning, who would be in the middle? He mentioned Sims first, then with Mac. I said, well, if, would you settle on someone if they begin to really get in, in stride? He said, oh, yeah. And yeah. he settled on Tevin Mack. Yeah, no question about that. You got a guy who's 
seeing a basket like that until he misses two or three in a row. You keep going to him. Meanwhile, it's been four minutes since Syracuse has had a field goal. And you got to figure Hughes and Beheim or Girard. And he does rattle it home. Gets the three ball. And he's the third option. That's his first three ball of the night. And we're tied at 59. Right, as a coach, you love that to come out. You execute a game. Uh, a plan, you get a great shot, and uh, right, it comes up big for you. Well, he's got options out there. This Syracuse team has more offensive options than we've seen in, in recent memory, and they've obviously had great success in recent years. And I wonder, you know, as this game winds down, Tim, if um, you know Jim Beheim goes to eBay and Dolajai offense for defense. You know, when you can make that switch. Trap in the middle this time gets it out to the wing. Does not fall for Newman, but it's retrieved by Mack and a recycle. And his the only white jersey in the paint area. And he comes up with it again after the deflection. Every loose ball belongs to number 13 in white. Shot clock down to six. Newman off the rim, and it's retrieved by Sidibe. Gets it into Beheim's hands. That was a big stop for the Cuse. Trying to stem the tide. Clemson's had the mojo in the last six minutes of this game. Well, and the thing with, with Clemson, they've stopped turning the ball over. They're getting shots up on the rim, and they're getting second shots. Behind the curl. It goes crying off the front rim. And their defense has been terrific. That goes crossover. A little scoop to the hoop. Count it. And the foul. Sidibe gets his fourth. Make that five, I beg your pardon. That's his fifth. So he's done. So now they, Jesse Edwards. They've got to come with another freshman at Edwards. They can't go to Dolezal quite yet. So they wanted to, you know, you want to get Edwards to give you, you know, maybe two minutes here, two and a half minutes. Well, that's the second orange participant to be relieved of duty tonight. First Dolajai. Or Dolajai, yeah. And then uh, Sidibe. And Jim Beheim still teaching. So now, now, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on Edwards. Uh, he's, unless Syracuse goes small. Gerard willing it in. Big time move by Joseph Gerard. He's got seven. And the last five points for the Cues. 62-61. Matt, too strong. Newman comes out of there with it. And a timeout taken by Brad Brownell. He did not timeout like that setup. And with 12 on the shot clock, we'll take the timeout. We'll have two remaining. When you think about where these teams are in the conference race, Jim, and what lies ahead for both teams. Okay, critical games, particularly on the road, when moving from January to February. Highly noted this road trip that the Orange is on. They get Duke next, and uh, it doesn't get any easier, obviously. Wake Forest at home, then NC State. But this, this game makes them feel a whole lot better about their positioning in conference play and with the net the tool that is used by the NCAA tournament selection committee if they can get this win and then head into Duke for that game Saturday and look at the schedule ahead for Clemson They're, those acts are never easy Wake Forest and Virginia lie in wait for them so they need to get even in the conference before they go out on the road for two consecutive conference games well that's that's the thing you know with if you're Clemson and you let this one slip away, it'll be your third home loss yep. and your two games under 500. And how about Syracuse? Should they win? It's five in a row on the road. At the buzzer on the clock, it goes off of the heel for Newman, and it's run down by Girard. Clemson by one. What a, what a position for the rookie to be in, Edwards, with, uh, with Sidibe and Dolajai out of the game. Well, the rebound. Let's see how Edwards holds up the freshman from the Netherlands. 
Trapp, by the way, with nine rebounds. And having a magnificent performance. His season high with 15. That one off the heel for Trapp. One near steal. Hughes on an ISO. Gives it up to Bayham on the wing. The ball fake and the deuce. But you know, if, you, if you're if you're Clemson, you, you, you drove him off the three-point line and settled for a long two right there. 22 for Buddy, and it's 63-62 Syracuse. And it's just amazing watching him and seeing how much he's improved from last year. And it's, yeah, you know, a giant leap, really. Well, I, that's and that's when a lot of players make that leap from their freshman to their sophomore year. The game slows down for them. Alamir Dawes not there, and the rebound collected, but fouled just after the rebound was brought in by Amir Sims. A foul against Syracuse. It goes against Edwards, his first. The pain and G-Man, Syracuse attempted, but Tevin Mack would have none of it. Well, Tevin Mack has owned the paint so far in this second half and uh, having a, uh, a career night inside and Tim kind of surprised and they've gone away from him a little bit in the last couple of minutes but uh, he was he was just on a tear there for a while and got them back into this game as he's a double double right there with 11 of 16 from the field he's uh, really done it all as I mentioned spent his first two seasons at Texas led them uh, in 2016 and 17, averaging just under 15 a game. It's a great get through the transfer portal from uh, Columbia and Greer High School. Well, those end of games, those misses on the front end of 1-1, one -one, just uh, really curry urchin. It's not been the mere sin's night. He has not scored in this game. Gotten a lot of help and been a facilitator. 20 in the game now, Hughes. Four ties, nine lead changes in this game. And now the Tigers find themselves down three with two and a half to play. That's where you want it. Right on cue, Mike. He's upset with himself that he didn't get the bucket. But he will get to the free throw line. And it was a nice drop by Sims. I won't get a, uh, a, a watch this. Watch him flash along the baseline and then the beautiful pass. And that's the that's the one that's been working for them against the zone. And now a word from Bojangles. Say good morning and mean it with two hefty, zesty Bojangles sausage biscuits. It's bow time. 29 points, 10 rebounds, and I'm sure Amir Sims would say, you know what, if I have to facilitate, it's going to be Tevin Max night. As long as we get the W, I'm okay with that. He was in traffic, and he's fouled. The ball fake, he got Newman airborne, and he picks up the personal. And they'll get two shots. And uh, if, it, if it gets down to a free throw shooting contest, it's going to be advantage Syracuse. Hughes to the free throw line. 78% on the year. Yeah, there's an effortless nature to the way Elijah comports himself on the floor. He's uh, one of those guys that does make it look easy. We know it's not, but he makes it look easy out there. 67-64, he has 22 on 6 of 13. Five steals to go with it. There's the ball in the dish. Counted in a foul. Sims with the delivery. Mack with the attack. All right, Hunter, Hunter was right in there, and he couldn't do anything with it. He draws three players over, and that's what allows him, Mack, to get into the lane area. And this is where, Mike, they really do miss Sadibe and Dozier. 
It really shows up that those guys are not available. You didn't need three players coming over to convert him. I know he's hot, but... We're tied at 67. He's got 10. Syracuse by three. <laughs> that was that was deep. Oh, that was deep too. And, and cunning. The, the reaction by Gerard. Cunning. Didn't even think about it. No, not a bit. Sims. Nice move. Harry Strong. His first bucket. 70-69. 107 to play. And you can blow the roof off of this spruced up little John. Edwards in traffic, a late pass and a turnover. See, and that's, that's the freshman not wanting to have anything to do with that shot. He was looking for somebody to pass it to. You know, Dolajai in there, maybe Sadie, you know, they go yeah. up without thinking. And look at the Hall of Fame coach encouraging the young man. That, he knows. He's in a tough spot. I mean, that absolutely you know. is a very tough spot for him to be in. Tigers down one. There's your entry pass. Sims has his pocket pick by guess who? Too many dribbles in the paint area. Bring the guards into play. Gerard with the pilfer. And now the milk clock. You see the shot clock Ten game seconds. clock? Ten second differential and a timeout by Beheim. G partner of uh, this is a pretty good finish we got tonight. <laughs> Watch this. I mean, he's on the tiger paw watching that. That is cold blooded right there. <laughs> yep, cold blooded. <laughs> Tell everybody quiet down. This is just the thing of beauty here. I'll tell you what, give it to Gerard. You know, he won two state titles as a football quarterback. Both of the games were played at the Carrier Dome. His father, Joe, played for John Beeline at Lemoyne College from 1990 to 92. So there is a swagger about this kid, and it was noteworthy that he had not really looked for a shot in the first half at all. And he's called his own number a couple of times when his team really needed it. Says a lot about his moxie. Yeah, he comes up with that shot. He gets in the double figures as well, but uh, no shot bigger. Be interesting to see what uh, Jim Bayheim Bay Bay dials up here with, uh, you know, still plenty of time on the shot clock, 20 seconds. I'll tell you, regardless, both of these teams have impressed me. You know, you're looking at Clemson, they've got two really good wins for their program, but they need this one at home big time. Syracuse. Mike, this is my first look at them in person this year. I think Beheim, with a very young backcourt and a blooming sun, that game is really coming of age, has a chance to make a deep run this year with his team. He's had teams that started a lot more poorly than this one go all the way to the Final Four. Uh, they're gonna, they've are gonna. they been coming off of the uh, Miller and jumping the ball. Not there. Tapped away, out of bounds, belongs to Syracuse. One on the clock. They're Just gonna, one on the shot clock. They're going to look at this. See if it hit the rim. Or see who touched it last. See, I think they'll look to see who touched if it, it was uh, deflected off of uh, a Syracuse player. If that's the case, and the Tigers get it, they will have the ball. But one second only means it's going to be tough. It'll have to be something thrown to the rim, you would think. Obviously doesn't touch the rim, but who touches it last does look like Clemson. Look like Mack got it last. Or maybe Newman. They're checking the clock as well. They're right there. It's Mack. Yeah, and it, it looks like he came over the back to yeah. knock that ball out of bounds. Yep. So I think that call will stand up. No reason to see anything that would change that ruling. And for Syracuse, 
a catch and shoot maybe or do you throw something to the rim here off the inbounds Mike? well you can't you can't there, there's not enough time to catch and shoot so you gotta you've got to throw something up that they can be tapped to get in. The, the tap yeah. in right well Bayheim will trigger it in and this is again where you miss bigs like Dolajai and you said it you said it seems a screen for Hughes and let him curl around there it is oh that was so close Clemson with time end to end they go and there it is 2.5 it's trained 71 70 Clemson 1.7 to go I think it may go back to 2.5. We'll see. But that was that was an incredibly well-designed play by Syracuse coming out. And Hughes almost got it to go down. Yeah, yeah. But because he missed, they were able to rush the ball up the floor. And watch this. You get the rebound and a good look ahead and a good push. Kayvon Moore with the push. Beautiful cut by Trapp. Fly Trapp. Lower Richland High, East over South Carolina. 17 points now. That's a career high for him. Nine rebounds. I thought when the ball went through, we had more than a 1.7. I thought we may have had more like 2, 2, 1, 2, 2 remaining on the clock. Let's see. There's the shot. You're right. That, that was almost a magnificent inbound. Yep. A miracle shot that could have given him a three-point lead. Yeah. Kayvon Moore made that play happen, though, motoring it up the floor. They are checking the time, and let's see. Yeah, they, they're definitely going to get more time. Well, let's see. It should. It's worth two, yeah, two point two, three. three. Yep. Which is big. And it has to go through. Now, let's see. Let's see if they... If they and again, this is a tough play for Edwards. If they get the ball, they or throw it to somebody long, and then the, 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 the kick out to uh, the kick out to a wing. Well, you certainly have options with Bayheim on the floor and Brownell. I think, and he couldn't get a timeout. Oh, no, he wanted it. It's intercepted, but out of bounds. Out of bounds off Clemson with .5, maybe .6 left. They thought they had it. In the bag, Mac touched it last. It does go out of bounds. So again, you can catch it under, if it's over. If it's over point three, you can still catch and shoot. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And Brad Brownell wanted a timeout, did not get it. And a real tough break that he didn't because he could have advised his guys. Look, keep them in front of you. Let's see. The ball's got to go completely hit, hit out of bounds. It hits right there. I think it's right about the right time. Maybe, yep. maybe point six, point seven, possibly. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be generous. Yep. Point four is conceivable that point it would fire, or point five, yep. maybe. You know, it's from our, from that angle, it was tough to see when the ball actually hit. Right. Here, you can be able to see it here. If it landed here on that, the line, that it bounced, landed. Yeah, if that ball bounced on the line, they could get more time. I was thinking the second bounce was when it went out of bounds. It right. was out of bounds was, perhaps I, on the first bounce. I was thinking the same thing, and it's... See, right... Wait. Right there. there is that's it, point nine. It, you know, does it hit Does it hit the sideline, or is it inbounds? Yeah, that's point nine. Or one four, excuse me. I don't see, but... That's one four on the clock. I don't know that you can make that determination from that look. This may be the best look. Yeah, see, I think, I think it's on the line there. I think it... But again, we don't have a camera right down the sideline. But if that's the bounce, then we're talking, you know, 1.4. Plenty of time for a catch and shoot. This is a huge decision with the clock that Paul Sells and uh, Jamie Lucky are looking at here. They may call, they may call Roger Ayers over to take a look yeah. at this one as well. Yep. They are attempting to blow up the shot that we had, which is the best, that was the best angle that we had. You can blow it up with the technology to see if, in fact, that first bounce was where it was, in fact, out of bounds. 
Well, there are times when uh, stoppages in play can become cumbersome, but in this case, it's exactly why we have the technology and why we use it. You know, Tim, this is where it would be nice to, you know, maybe have that. What? It, it, it's still, it looks it looks like it hits in the court. Yeah, but if any part of that ball, any part of the yeah. leather is on the orange, but you, have, but you have to be the, you have to be able to definitively see that. Agreed. Well, it all comes back down to uh, your definition, your subjective view of indisputable video evidence, <laughs> and that, as you know, is uh, very subjective. <laughs> That is the best angle we've got. Gonna look one more this, time. This is it. the one. This, this, this is the one that, and they're trying to blow it up to see if they're, you know, that you can see any separation. But the camera angle, and it's no for, it's no fault of well, our, our a, camera people. I actually, you see a reflection from the lighting that I think gets in the way of whether the ball is actually. Uh, out of bounds. Any part of the the orange leather is on the orange. Well, and you can see, I mean, Jim Bayham is literally yep. two, two feet away from yep. where this ball hit. I don't think anyone other than Jim or maybe Adrian Autry, his assistant, would have had a better view of that. This is a huge call because the difference in the kind of play that you can run with 0 0.4 versus 1.4 is huge, particularly when it's side out of bounds like this. This ball will be side out of bounds. Right now, my map call, Clyde Trapp was kind of blocking the view of, of the camera angle from the other side. All right. They're going to bring Roger Ayers into the conversation now. And uh, by the way, I know we've said this before, this is a veteran group of officials. I, there's a reason why you put certain crews on certain games, and uh, this is as credible a trio as you'll find. Well, and, and you said, you, you know, you can tell how hard this call is. Oh, it's huge. Because of of the experience, and you, you made the, the comment earlier about them being, you know, definitive in yeah. making a call. Right. Yeah, they would have loved. To, I think they would have loved to this too. I think you're at point nine. Yeah, yeah. They're going to put point five, which, you know, is, which is time. Well, here's 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 what the, I believe they did this. They're going point nine because you really weren't sure if it was going to be point four or one four. So they just divided it and decided to go point nine. I, I think that's the the best judgment you could possibly make. Gerard will trigger it in. Bayheim is uh, located on the right wing at the bottom of your screen. Let's uh, let's see what they decide to draw up here, G-Man. Timeout was taken by Clemson. What do you yeah, anticipate? Yeah, and I, you know, you know, in this in this situation, the, the most dangerous guy is the one who's taking the ball in. Now, is there enough time Good point. to get a tap back and a long three in that in this you know in this situation? I'd say there is. Or he set up a screen for Hughes somehow. I'm going to put you know a couple guys on him. Washington is going to check in. By the way, an additional ball handler, backup guard, Howard Washington. He's coming in. I love your point about sometimes the inbounder is your best guess. We'll see who triggers the ball in. If it's Bayheim, I love that notion that he might trigger it in and get it back. We'll see. But it looks like it will be Washington. So your thought about a, a screen may be in play here, Mike. You got Bayheim on the other side, and you got Hughes who's lurking. You're going to get a little cross screen from Gerard. Now he's going to come up. There it is. Clemson wins. How about that hard 
for victory <laughs> for Clemson at home. These games keep, keep following us around, partner. <laughs> I might uh, check in for another cameo with you before the season's up. This was fun. Uh, it's always great working with you, though, Carter. First road victory, the first road defeat Beats. for Syracuse. Yeah, and a big and win. And a big home win for Clemson, yeah. particularly with what lies ahead on their schedule. 71-70, to 70, ending a five-game win streak for Syracuse. Our many thanks to Rick Walensic, our producer, our director, Lonnie Dale, one of the great veterans of our business. Our final score, 71-70. A reminder, tune in to our next game coming up Thursday night as NC State's women visit Clemson. From our old pal, the G-Man, Mike Jeminski, this is Tim Brando, back again in the ACC. How do you do? So long from Clemson, South Carolina.